you know, perhaps this wasn't such a bad idea. I mean, sure, I'm never going to be able to return to my home country thanks to a little bit of theft that I've done for the channel. I say it's for the channel, but it's really just for me. This is nice. It's nice. It's peaceful. I left the switch back at home! And so, Dr. Lockdown began his rather stupid journey back to Sydney because he is a f***ing idiot who can't stand being with that technology for 5 seconds. Well, the plan to hide in New Zealand has failed. I suppose I should get back to making videos instead. Not that they're gonna be monetized! <laughs> On last year's list, I commented that things had been pretty sh overall, but this year it was as if all shreds of human decency had been stamped out entirely by one single person. Bondroud. Wait, who did you think I was talking about? So as the world crumbles around us, as other nations start closing in with their evil gaze, and as YouTube starts kicking us up the ass again, let's discuss the best toys of the year, or at least the ones that I purchased. Before I begin, I should mention that most of the toys on this list are in fact from Titan's Return. Unfortunately, I was a bit strapped for cash this year because I was saving up for a Europe trip which I'm still currently paying off. However, this year I'm going to be focusing more on a third party stands, especially in the MP scale and Iron Factory. My MP collection's too small! I need more! I mean, yes, I'm paying back the Europe trip, but I need more Transformers! Not that it matters though, because last year was still pretty awesome for Transformers, giving us possibly the best generations line we've gotten since it first started out. Now, I know the first Classics line wasn't the best of it, but this is the best since then because the plastic quality has been getting better, and of course this line isn't focusing primarily on super, super G1 characters, and by that I mean the animation G1 characters, not the obscure ones. Time to Turn was filled with obscure G1 characters, and that was quite good. But this list does not start off with obscure G1 characters from Time to Turn, but instead obscure G1 characters from Generations, the original Generations. Or at least the War for Cybertron years where they also did a few other things. I'm not usually one to try and rebuy toys from my childhood because, well, they were, quite frankly, garbage. Except one. Close friends of mine may remember this, but they're not the kinds that usually discuss things on Transformers boards. Transformers specific friends definitely won't know it, and at no point have I actually mentioned him on this channel. I used him as my icon for a bit, and in fact on some websites I've still got him as my icon, but that's not the case anymore, especially how I've adopted the Dr. Lockdown persona. This figure came from a time that I'm still trying to get toys from because they were really really good, and it's got great articulation, a great head sculpt, and okay vehicle mode and albeit rather terrible third mode that I'm not even going to mention, and overall a really interesting design. Coming out of left field, I guarantee no one is going to expect this. This is Generations Darkmount. Now Darkmount isn't actually that bad a figure. He's got an interesting transformation, a cool colour scheme, decent articulation, and a cracking head sculpt. However, in the grand scheme of things, he still has a lot of jank. You won't find me singing the praises of this figure with no criticism on the side, however, he was special to me. Something drew me to him as a child, and when I saw a cheap copy on Facebook, I jumped at the chance, as my original copy was pretty much ruined. This explains the dual weapons. 
He's not the best toy ever, which is why he's pretty low on the list, barely scraping past the honourable mentions, but there's something special about him that I can't completely put aside. I should also mention that I don't know a damn thing about the character yet, aside from the fact that he's supposedly a ruthless warlord. I really should read the UK comics, however that will be after I delve into the long and detailed IDW ones. This story carries on the same story that I have mentioned in a few previous videos, but I'll recap it just for the sake of this video. Australia Post screwed up big time. I had ordered several figures through TF Source and through eBay, and I had them sent to Shopmate. Now please, don't let this story discourage you from using their service because I'm partially to blame. I left them for far too long. It got to the point where the day I had ordered them to have them shipped over to Australia was actually the cutoff date, and I paid for them, but in the end, they ended up being thrown in the bin anyway. And that's fine, that's an honest mistake. They paid back every single cent of that, and I'm really grateful for it. Plus, I've ordered from Shopmate many times since then, and it was just a bad case of that one time. Now, they're really, really good, just so long as you don't go over the 60 days. But getting back those toys was really difficult. Sure, some figures I missed out on, and I'm glad I did because I got the better repaints later, and thank god I got Feral Queen and R.I.D. Takara Windblade, because those two are near impossible to get. They actually made it through. But one of the figures I was really glad to rebuy later on, and in fact I bought it from the designer himself, was the number 16 spot. Being KFC, not Kentucky Fried Chicken, but Keith's Fantasy Club, Scorpinator! Forged from an amalgamation of obscure Transformer references, this guy makes a perfect companion to Soundwave, which I don't have. He also works quite well as a standalone figure, despite being a little complicated. The ball joints can be a little fragile, but as long as you take everything smoothly, it should work out well enough. Might loosen up them eventually, with a little bit of soap, but there's very little I can find wrong with the figure at this current point in time. Aside from the scorpion legs not quite staying in the right place for cassette mode, and the fact that he's a little pricey, that's about it. If this weren't a subjective list, he'd be a little bit higher, but hey, he's still got a place. Other figures I lost through Shopmate included the entire first wave of Titans Return, featuring basically everything but the leaders. I'm glad I missed out on Scourge because I'm getting him in the Takara form. I'm glad I missed out on Blur because I ended up getting Brainstorm. I ended up rebuying Hardhead later and upgraded him with non-F parts, and I am so glad I skipped Skull Cruncher. I'm not quite as glad as to the fact that I skipped Titans Return Galvatron because that toy is utterly terrible. But with Skull Cruncher, they came out with a much better colour scheme fixed up with a few Shapeways parts later, and you have the number 15 spot. I present to you, Titan's Return, Croc. Part of the reason this figure made the list was for the modifications. I've added Shapeways parts, which I'll show a link to on the screen and put in the description. They allow the beast legs to fill in those horrible gaps. Even without them though, he's still quite a stunning figure. An amazing colour scheme, near perfect articulation, inclusive weapons in the form of his crocodile claws, and not a terrible tail gun, and one of the best head sculpts of the line. All these factors elevate this figure into something far better than he has any right to be. People will complain that his head isn't round enough, but I much prefer the square look. Others will say he never transformed into the original, but I think transforming is better. Simply put, he's a fantastic figure. Also, Quake looks like sh**. There's no way around it. Oh look, what a coincidence, it's exactly the same story again, about Australia Post losing my parcels and throwing them out. Full disclosure, I completely forgot about this toy until November. Then as I was browsing around on Nonef, I saw some upgrade parts and I instantly had to rebuy it. So I jumped on over to the TCCA sale boards and it went quite well. I had a $15 copy within hours and I'm quite glad I got him. It's not a case of Titans Return peaking too early as Combiner Wars did with Superion, but it is definitely a fantastic toy for the size class. And it was definitely a good indication of what was to come later on. I'm so glad I finally got my copy of the number 14 pick, Titans Return Hardhead. Ooh, quite the wobbly head he has there. It's not so much hard as it is wobbly. <laughs> not very funny. Featuring non-F feet, this guy really comes to life. I was this close to getting the Weijang version with a bigger size, but the new parts pretty much sold it for me. I'm not quite sure why I prefer him over Croc. I'd say Croc is a better toy, however something about his design and colours work better. I wish I could say why, but I just can't. He's a damn good figure with a damn good headmaster. Seriously, the detail on here works really well for some reason, and I'm damn happy I bought him. Also, Quake still looks like sh**. I just thought I should reiterate that. 
Oh hey, it's another Titans Return figure, and wait, no it isn't. This one's actually the most recent figure that I've reviewed, and you probably already know the story about it. Sort of. See, I didn't actually steal this figure like I said I did in the videos, that was a joke. When I was at the Hasbro meetup, people were giving out prizes, and unfortunately, mine was too late to actually select it. But then the guy that ended up getting it instead decided to give it to me because he knew I would enjoy it far more than he would. So we swapped. I gave him the stand, and he gave me the figure. And it turned out really, really well. And then we made a funny story about it that you've probably seen part of at the beginning of the video, which is really, really all there is to it. Unfortunately, I won't be able to continue the story because I've been rostered on for work at the next TCCA meetup. Bummer. But we're not here to talk about running gags, we're here to talk about toys. And at the number 13 pick, we have Last Night, Argos Exclusive, Dark of the Moon, Optimus Prime. Wow, that's a lot of subtitles. This figure's vehicle mode really isn't that good. But there's enough here to make you overlook it. It's not screen accurate, not specifically Optimus, and it doesn't even evoke that weird Dark of the Moon design that much. However, there's something about it that just works. Perhaps it's the anime proportions, perhaps it's the design, or perhaps it's the weapons. Something just screams awesome here, and I would say more, but there's an entire review on him already, so you should just watch that instead. Segwaying through the whole UK thing, because Argos is a UK exclusive store, while I was in the UK, I didn't really have that much collecting. I mean, sure, I got Bludgeon on the way there, and Twin Twist on the way back, but when I was actually on the rest of my holiday, it wasn't that good. I mean, I got Dark Cybertron, that was nice, but many comic fans tell me it's pretty bad, although I don't really have a point of reference for that yet. I got Six Shot, who finally justified the leader price point, but still, he's fairly flawed for what he is. I got Optimus Prime. He's Optimus Prime. Not as good without the repro labels. I can't remember whether I got Brawn in Sydney or not, but I'll have to check, because if I did get him in Sydney, then he won't be on the title card footage that I left. Oh, by the way, I have unused title card footage. Here, take a look! Actually, no, wait, that's end card footage. My bad. But there was one toy that I really, really enjoyed from my trip, and I could not stop transforming him then, and I still cannot stop transforming him now. People may argue that his proportions are rather off, but what they did with him, I feel, is much better. It's in the same vein as what fans' toys did to Quakewave and Sea Spray. Wait, Shockwave and Sea Spray. Quakewave and Spindrift? Ugh, you get the point. The point is, flying high in the number 12 spot, Titans Returns, Cosmos. Is he better than Shockwave? Easily. He is, without a doubt, the best Hasbro Legends figure I own. I'm a little sad that he's missing his Minicon, but that's an easy find on Facebook. Seriously, the Transformers Collectors Club Australia sale threads are a gold mine. Many dismiss him because he isn't G1 enough, and to them I say shut up because this is better. Cosmos actually feels cool now, instead of derpy. I don't have much else to say, so... yeah. God. Damn it, Hasbro, I was finally done with Combiners! Why did you have to bring them back for Power of the Primes? Not to mention, you haven't really fixed anything. I mean, sure, they're pretty good Combiners, but there's none of that Titans Return pizzazz there. And then you can unite Warriors by merging with Takara. I mean, come on, I'm gonna be stuck with stickers and rather weird decos. I mean, I love the Hasbro releases, but it was nice having a choice when you could choose Unite Warriors. I am glad that Unite Warriors existed while it did, though, because I think they gave us the pinnacle of Combiner Wars. And no, it wasn't actually Megatronia. Megatronia was nice, but she barely didn't make the cut because there were just so many other good toys. As is the same with G2 Bruticus. No, the pinnacle of Combiner Wars, and by extension Unite Warriors, is one that I really didn't expect to like, but after I saw the final colours, I had to get it. In 11th place, we have Unite Warriors Computron. Whilst the Hasbro version can just go f off with its ugly colours, baffling use of the worst mould of the line and ruining both the character Scrounge and the figure Cosmos, Takara knew what they were doing when they decided to present us with a best of set for their own take on Computron. It's essentially a remembrance set, with the best combiner torso slash best aerial bot, according to those who don't actually know the brilliance of Alpha Bravo, the second best car bot, an easy way to get the motorcycle design without having to ruin Defensor without Rook, the best Protector Bot, and by extension, the best Combaticon, if you count that Reshells is the same figure, and Blastoff, who is now even worse. Seriously, why the hell is Power of the Primes releasing such a garbage figure again? Aside from the mess that is Strafe, and the lack of those dedicated Combiner appendages, although I'd argue that the knockoff Perfect Effect upgrades work perfectly, this guy is still a damn fun Combiner. 
Sure, he's still missing some Shapeways kits, but he's still very damn fun. He's still not as good as Superion, although let's face it, not even Power of the Primes is going to be able to top Superion at this point in terms of the old combiner peg system. However, the number two place is still up for grabs, although now that I think about it, Predaking still has a chance to take the top spot too. Just don't do anything you did with Devastator. Throw all those ideas out the f***ing window along with the business representative who approved that decision. And all copies of Titans Return Quake while you're at it. Brace yourselves, the Titans are returning! They're finally coming back to this list! Welcome back to the meat potatoes of the review! Now, I know I reviewed this figure's cousin rather unfavorably due to its poor QC, terrible colors, and overall lack of paint. However, I truly believe that the original figure is pretty fun, and he is a ton of fun once you add the repro labels. He's got great detail, great modes, except for the train one, and he really shines through as his own character instead of an Astro Train pre-paint. In fact, I prefer him as his own thing to Astro Train, yet a lot of people think, oh yeah, Astro Train's better because it's G1. Forget Astro Train! This is where it's at. In the number 10 spot, we have Time's Return Sentinel Prime! Look at his glory! He is awesome! Yes, he's stealing Astro Train's thunder in a way, and yes, the train mode sucks. That said though, usually triple changes have one weak mode anyway, and the mold never really fit Astro Choo Choo to begin with anyway. The stickers bring out an elegance that was never quite felt with the plain paint apps, especially in the spaceship mode. This guy looks beautiful. Now many will overlook this figure and write it off as a collection of everything wrong with the Titan's return line, but if this is the worst the line has to offer, then hey, it was a pretty good line overall. Okay, where are the where did I leave it? Ah! It's virtually impossible to say Hasbro Triple Changer without instantly thinking of Generation Springer. However, I'd argue that there is in fact a better Triple Changer mold. No, it's not Sentinel Prime in spite of him already being on this list, and it's not that original Blitzwing mold because that was kind of crap, although I do like the Double Dealer mold a little bit. And it's definitely not the Octo mold, oh, sorry, it's definitely not the Octane mold. Damn, Hasbro's got me saying what they want me to say. Because that was, well, rather limited in certain transformation capacities, had a few molding issues, and overall just wasn't really that fun. A lot of people are going to give me flack for preferring the pre-paint version over the final version, but I have my eyes set on the DX9 version of that specific character, so I'm kind of fine with this. Not to mention that the bad stickers that were on the original have been replaced with repro labels again, so he looks much, much better, although not to the extent of Sentinel Prime. The reason why he shines over Springer is because he has no bad modes whatsoever. Yes, that's right, no bad modes. Springer had a kind of weird way of tabbing in in the car mode, and the helicopter mode was kind of messy. I say kind of because it wasn't completely messy, it was still mostly cohesive. But this figure is cohesive in every single mode. You can't have a triple changer without a bad mode, can you? Well, apparently you can with the ninth entry, Titans Return Megatron! I hear a lot of complaints about the Blitzwing mold, and to be honest, I just don't care. People get annoyed with the Headmaster gimmick, but that's frustrated people since day one and everybody should be over it by now, Freddery! People complain about the stickers, however Megatrons aren't nearly as bad as Optimus Primes and repro labels are a thing you can purchase for a decent price. People say that the jet mode is kibbly, but that's essentially what every aerial bot from Combiner Wars did. People say that the turret looks dumb without the fusion cannon, however, that's accurate to certain models of tank. He'd be perfect if he had a waist swivel, but as he stands, he's a mighty fine Megatron. And for those who'd rather give up proper articulation in favor of a shiny paint job and a larger size class, stop it. Please. You're only lying to yourself. Paint doesn't make a good figure. You need articulation first, then paint on the top of it. Yes, paint's better for displaying, but come on, it's just not that good. Yay, it's the Michael Vella joke again, and you probably know where this is going. This time, I actually did sort of steal it, although by accident. Yes, in the rush of one of the meetups, I accidentally took Michael Vella's figure home, and I didn't realize until the morning after. He was selling it anyway, and I wanted it anyway, so I bought it off him. And he is one of the best Titans Return Deluxes I have seen. He's fun, he's poseable, he's got a great transformation, and most of all, he's got great colours. Plus, once you get the non-F parts involved, he, he takes on a whole new personality. It's a shame he never showed up Down Under because of Hasbro's weird release schedules and not really doing things, because he really is one of the best Deluxes. At number 8, I'm probably butchering the German language, we have... Titans return! Rainstorm! You have no idea how much I wanted this figure, and how gutted I was that he never got an Australian release. 
I was this close to getting the Wei Jang version, in spite of it not having a properly coloured chest. If Hasbro hadn't announced a restock, I may not have gotten the toy on the list at all. Boy am I glad I have it now though, and boy am I shocked at how bad the other versions look in comparison. Blur is bland, Nautico is all wrong, and RC looks alright but nothing special. The Takara versions are another story entirely, but in the end I'm happy with what I got. Taking a break from Titans Return figures, let's go to my favourite size class. The small ones. All of them. Legends, Legions, Old Legends, Micromasters, Minicons, you name it. Hot Soldiers has been a bit of a weird company because they've had quite varied releases. Their first release was pretty good in terms of solidity, but it was very lacking in articulation. And their third release was pretty good in articulation, but was a hollow mess. This figure strikes a perfect balance between the two, and honestly, it fits quite well in the existing size class, instead of that bigger one that those KO companies are trying to push. Every time I worry about the company losing its touch, I remember this figure and think, yeah, they probably have a chance. In the number 7th spot, we have Hot Soldiers, Ironhide. Given the track record of the company, albeit with only two figures, Ironhide should not be as good as he is. However, he just works. Everything fits together surprisingly well, and outside of the lack of paint and a lack of a waist swivel, when one could have clearly been engineered in even with a budget, there's not much to complain about. I hope this is the standard going forward, because so far they've only nailed one figure out of three. I'm interested to see where this company goes, especially with their new Hearts of Steel line, but I'm not exactly hopeful. In the end though, we still got a great Ironhide, and I'm glad they managed to pull it off. Now my thoughts about The Last Knight are somewhat controversial. I think it might be one of the best films of the series because it is so bad. Does that mean you should excuse everything for it? No, if you want to go hate on those movies, go right ahead. I'm fine with the current status quo and it'll eventually crash itself into the ground anyway, and it'll rebuild itself up into something new without Michael Bay along with it, and that's fine by me. But when it comes to the toy line, it was pretty terrible. Yes, there were great figures, but they were fleshed out with really, really poor excuses for repaints. We had repaints for figures that should have had original moulds, and the ones that could have just used repaints got original moulds instead. I mean, come on, what? There's probably only two figures that are worth getting, maybe three, but I haven't really seen that much of him. But if you want to have a safe bet, then I recommend you get my sixth choice, which is kind of ironic because he's very devilish and could use the number 666. But, you know, one, it's just coincidence, I assume. Number six, it's the last night, Megatron. The stars align and we get the best movie Megatron figure ever. Finally fixing the problem of having a boring alt mode, and yes, Dark of the Moons wasn't quite as interesting as I would have hoped, and also fixing Megatron's ugly design, and adding a fusion cannon, this figure does pretty much everything a Voyager should. The transformation is complex, everything clicks in well, and once again, he finally has the fusion cannon, and for some reason the new head surprisingly works. When I first saw it, I found it pretty ugly, but now I think it's quite awesome. It's also way better than the head sculpt on the leader, amongst other things wrong with that one like the hollow arms and the kibble cape. Seriously, why do the leader classes keep failing? Whilst that size class continues to fall into the abyss on all fronts, the Voyagers are really picking it up. Although it does remind me that I haven't reviewed a Megatron on my channel yet. Or any Last Night toys for that matter. Okay, top 5, and you probably already know what it's going to be. Yes, I'm really glad to have reviewed this figure first, and although the alt mode is kind of bad, the robot mode is fantastic. A lot of people have overlooked him because they prefer the character that fit into the show being Blastwave, but I still think that figure looks kind of crap. This figure is a perfect update, well, aside from vehicle mode, of its G1 character, skipping out the pretender part, which I'm really happy for, and giving us a really cool design. In the number 5 spot, it's Titans Return Bludgeon! Titans Return Bludgeon! Titans Return Bludgeon! Titans Return Bludgeon! I take pride in the fact that I was the first person to review this, coming across it in Singapore airport thanks to sheer dumb luck. The alt mode may be a bit naff, and because many people collect based on how good a character is, not how good a toy is, most skipped him entirely and focused on the inferiorly coloured blast wave. Ew. Wait, I just said that, didn't I? Yeah, the problem with unscripted parts and scripted parts is that you often repeat yourself. In the face of all this, I absolutely love Bludgeon. In terms of robot mode, he is near perfect. I'm just sad that not many people actually purchased him, and even sadder that he got a limited release in Australia. I saw a couple of Mize in my local area, heard he was at Toys R Us, and that was it. He never got anything beyond that. It seems like a common case, affecting Titans Return Slugslinger and outright killing any chance of receiving Overlord and Ramhorn. 
These truly are dark times. You know what I feel gets a lot of unjustified hate? The Iron Factory RC mold. And you know what I feel I really shouldn't have three of? The Iron Factory RC mold. But you know what I have three of? The Iron Factory RC mold. Through pure coincidence of me just coming across it and accidentally getting the first edition of the Optimus Prime, which I meant to get the second because it was cheaper, but hey, it was a shipping mix-up. I now have all three versions. Wait, they released a fourth one? Oh well, to keep the joke running, I better get that one too. The mold isn't that bad. Yes, there's a few kibble issues and the alt mode is kind of trash, but it's not that bad. However, what if the vehicle mode wasn't trash? And that's why this figure takes the fourth spot. It's rather ironic that the best of this trio ends up being the worst of the MMC series, because right here, we have Iron Factory Elita 1. The two major things that bring the other two versions down are the colours and the alt mode. Overall, the robot mode is sculpted fine. They may fall into a chibi aesthetic, but due to the small parts, it works pretty well. Unfortunately, the other two have rather boring colours. Silver is nice, but it gets boring after a while. As for RC, her pink just washes out all the detail, and the white feels a little weird. I get that's who she is, but MMC was able to do fine at a larger scale. You don't have to put as many paint apps, you just have to choose good ones for a smaller version. Then we get to the alt mode, and this figure doesn't have the best alt mode, until you use the gun and turn it into a tank. Suddenly, the exposed legs look like a turret, and it ends up surprisingly working. Also, Elita 1 has the best head sculpt. In the end, it's an interesting reversal of what MMC did. I may end up getting the Combiner Hunter version, but I doubt it'll be able to top this. Now, Elita 1 is cute, but what is cuter? Well, the last figure from Titan's Return. What could be better than Brainstorm, and possibly even Trigger- Nah, nah, no, it's not better than Trigger Happy, but it's still pretty damn good. I'll tell you what's better. A perfect gun mode, a perfect tank mode, and a most adorable little beast mode. Ooh, Gucci Gucci is the number three spot. It's Titan's return. Shufflo, isn't he adorable? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. There's just not much to say about him. He's simple, has three killer modes, a detailed design. Yes, he's sadly lacking in articulation, but he is just so goddamn cute! I honestly can't begin to describe how cute this thing is. Power of the Primes be damned, the Titan Masters are the best use of this size class. I'm sad that everything's going to become a samey pretender. Sure, given my obsession with small scale figures anyway, I'll be buying all of them, but part of me wishes we got more of these little dudes. Still, nice that they're Target Masters instead of just plain old pretenders, and better ones too, although I can still be sad. Hang on a second. Didn't I just review this guy a spot ago? No? Oh, that, yeah, that was the other guy from the... Sorry! Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, another figure that gets a lot of hate that I feel is unjustified is the Iron Factory Optimus Prime mold. And yes, I know I'm giving him away, but I have to go into the details of why I feel it's unjustified. Not just because it's good, but now because people are still salivating over it simply because it got retooled into Nova Prime. Oh no, it's not IDW accurate or Victory accurate because neither of them had the Gold Bomber armor and it's all very weird. Who cares? It's a fun toy. That's what Iron Factory does best. Fun. And that's why we have in the second spot, Iron Factory Ultimate Commander. Also, Optimus Prime. Why do these things keep falling in? Nova Prime actually has enough retooling to make me double dip. But can you blame me? Yes, the alt mode looks rubbish in pictures, but once you see it in person, he looks far better. Even without the God Bomber trailer. I realise I'm butchering continuities here, especially triggering a certain Israeli fan. Although I say fan, but it's more just a friend. I don't even know if he watches my channel. But it's my channel, and I don't really give a sh the robot mode is basically everything I could ever ask for in an Optimus Prime. And no, it's not the War Within design, it's actually the Stormbringer one, done by the same artist. Please, stop confusing it! Similar, but much thinner. And you know what? That's fine by me. I mean, it's got a great silhouette. Top it off with, um, actually the combined mode is just okay. It's fun to combine him, but compared to the base robot, it's a little lacking. Perhaps Nova Prime will fix that, but we'll have to wait and see. Now please do not screw up Bruticus. I want you to kick DX9 Sulky right up the ass. You can do this. Do it. Do it before DX9 does their Predator King, please. By all accounts, this figure should not be on this list at all. Yet for some reason it is. Is it good enough to be on the top spot of the list? I mean, objectively speaking. Yeah. But it's more than that. My philosophy of a collector is to find the best toys, 
not to find the best characters through media and then represent them in toys. Sure, there are some exceptions, as you have witnessed with Dark Mount at the start of this list. But, when it comes to what I want in my collection, I want the weirdest, the wackiest, and the best figures possible. Give me a good toy? Fine. Give me a good toy with a crazy repaint? Now that's a cool one. And that brings me to this guy. No one's gonna see this coming, I guarantee it. I haven't mentioned him once on this channel. I maybe have mentioned him a few times on Discord, but I don't think anyone caught on. One man, by the name of Jason Murray, who sold it to me, he would have probably known about it. And that's about it. It's a weird toy that happened to be on sale for quite cheap. Mint in box, or mint sealed in box in fact. And I opened it up, cracked it open, and it was utterly fantastic. The colours? Great. The design? Great. The articulation? It's almost there. It's kind of got some hampered arms and it's missing a waist swivel, but everything else is there. He's got great weapons, great weapon storage, a fantastic head sculpt. Yet you've probably never heard of this guy. No. He's not Masterpiece. He's not R.I.D. He's not Generations. He's not even from the recent years. He's not Masterpiece. He's not Third Party. He's not Iron Factory. He's none of those guys. He is his own thing, and by all accounts, he is a throwaway repaint. But in spite being a throwaway repaint, he remains the best figure of this year. I know it may seem like I'm dragging this out, but trust me, you're not gonna guess what this is. Brace yourselves. For Transformers Prime, Dead End. Yeah, I'm being completely honest. He's better than everything else I got this year. No joke. Seriously. What's with all the laughter? You may be wondering why this is the case, given how the figure has no waist swivel and limited shoulder articulation. To be honest, I'm not completely sure why he ended up on the top of the list, but here he is. I think it's because of the colours and the transformation, including the perfect way to do a chest without 100% cheating, but that can't be all of it. Either way, I absolutely love this toy and I am so glad to have him. You know what? This is how it should be. The best things in life are the ones you never knew you wanted, and when they show up on your doorstep, they surprise you with absolute joy. There's also a bit of melancholy here though, because this is one of the last designs before the new system took over, where everything became blockier and easier. Paint budgets dipped, plastic thickness plummeted, and although we got many great toys, as is evident from the Titans Return figures on this list, there's something much better about these old ones. Not too old to be clunky, and not too new to be hollow. Just the right time, and boy is he good! Here we go! <sighs> well, that wraps up 2017. On to 2018 now, where I will be completely demonetized in the sense that I won't be able to monetize any of my videos, whether they are demonetized or not, because I'm no longer a YouTube partner. Well, not yet as I film this, but that's gonna happen. I mean, come on, 800 subscribers in basically just over 20 days? Nah, that's not gonna happen. Don't worry, that's my next goal to get up to, 1,000 subscribers. Is that a bit of a pipe dream? Maybe, I'm gonna aim for it anyway. This year is the year of Third Party and Masterpiece, also Iron Factory, because Pound of the Primes isn't really giving me that love that I was feeling with Titan's Return. I should probably go over some honourable mentions in the meantime though, so just, just let me pull them up on the computer. Da, 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 da. Here we go. I'm not going to pull them out because I did that for all the other characters and it's just a bit crazy. Combiner Wars G2 Bruticus. He's really good, but he's not quite finished. I feel like I need to fix up the thighs a bit with some upgrade kits. Maybe fix up Blast Off so he's actually a shuttle because there are Shapeways kits for that. He's got the perfect effect upgrades for both the head, the guns, and the hands and feet, so that works fine. He might need a few Shapeways pieces for Knuckle Guards. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot that needs to be done, but it'll take time. Time to turn Topspin. Everyone loves him more than Trigger Happy. For some reason. I don't know, it's weird to me because, you know, Top Spin is very flawed and Trigger Happy is utter perfection, but, well, I guess people just have more nostalgia for the jump starters. I got G1 Flat Top. He's a ton of fun, and now I want all the G1 Micro Masters, even though I'm not really a G1 collector. Micro Masters don't count. They're the small scale of things, which is what I'm obsessed with. And finally, I have to mention Fort Max up there because, well, Fort Max is bloody huge and bloody fun. I did have to change the face a little bit because I wasn't happy with the toy accurate or the rebirth accurate face, so I swapped him out for a headmaster's accurate face, although I stripped the screw and had to end up gluing him on. Still works fine though. Yes, I think it does. Yeah, works fine. I'll have a video up on that and of Cup, who's also getting an upgraded face eventually. 
Not sure how that's going to pan out, but I did say I'd make it. And that's it for the year. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope to make more Transformers content in the future. The future of my channel is uncertain, and I'm still not sure how I'm going to reorganize the content to appeal more to my subscribers and to gain in new ones, because currently the Transformers fandom is where most of my subscribers are coming in. I might have to cut out anime content entirely, and I'm definitely not doing any more Nintendo stuff. But... I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to need to take a bit of time to think about it, and I'll be back with an update video on the whole thing. In the meantime, I'll keep scripting more reviews, and until then, uh, subscribe to my channel, I guess, because apparently I actually need subscribers now. Thanks for watching, though. Thank you, always, for watching.